Lauren has been living in Southampton for the past eight years, but she's been a longtime lover of the environment. She grew up believing that all living things are interconnected and interdependent, and that we should all strive to live in harmony with nature. A year ago, she started a digital marketing company called Monday Media that was founded on the fundamental idea that good businesses are masterful in influencing a positive shift toward a more conscious society. This inspired her to take the lead in her own microblogging project called At Mommy Turns Green, <laughs> where she shares her household's journey in creating a zero waste home. On most days, however, you can find her creating, cooking, reading, playing with her kids, and doing yoga. And we're so pleased that she made time for us uh, tonight. Thank you, Lauren, so much. Thank you. Thank you, Penny. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I am Lauren. I've spent the past several years living low waste at home and in my community. I started blogging about my journey, as Penny said. Uh, on Instagram and sometimes on Facebook uh, at Mommy Turns Green and sharing my time with the Ecological Cultural Initiative, a nonprofit in Hampton Bays, uh, the Southampton Town Sustainable Advisory Committee, and uh, the Waste Management Committee. I've educated myself, asked questions, watched others succeeded and failed to arrive at a sweet spot that feels sustainable for my family of four. By incorporating the zero waste principles, cooking from scratch, and making my own cleaning and self-care products, I still feel there is so much to learn. And I've been coming back to the realization that this, is a li this lifestyle is a practice. It's a mindset shift to a lifestyle that tries for zero, understanding that no one will ever arrive at zero, and that's okay. I, I remind myself that living sustainably has to feel sustainable. It's going to be imperfect and it's going to look different for everyone. I started out on my zero waste journey about three years ago. Before zero waste, I was feeling good about how my husband and our two young boys and I were living our lives. In my mind, we were conscious consumers, buying secondhand when we could, especially with all the baby toys and clothes and accessories that are needed, um, decreasing our carbon footprint with uh, low emission vehicles and eating organic non-GMO foods, recycling, buy, um, all those things. So at some point along the way, I read an article in New York Magazine about Lauren Singer, uh, who described how she fits a year's worth of trash into a 16 ounce mason jar. At first I was totally confused and perplexed by this reality, thinking how can she do that? And then I started to think about it and started to connect the dots. What she was getting at was in order to consider the environmental and the ethical impact an item has on others and the planet, we need to start minimizing the amount of trash we make. We need to be mindful not only of what we are consuming, but also of the packaging it comes in. Here I was thinking I was so thoughtful about my healthy lifestyle, and I was, but only up to a certain point. I was creating waste, and a lot of it was plastic waste recyclable or not recyclable, it's still waste. It's still going somewhere, right? That's when I started noticing how my everyday choices were affecting the planet, even the ones I thought were healthy. And I didn't feel that there should be a trade-off between my lifestyle and the life of our planet. I wanted to serve them both. I needed a new way and I found it through zero waste living. Can I just stop really quick? Can you hear my kids in the background? Yes, but that's okay. Okay, okay hold on one second. <laughs> that's part of Zoom, Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? I said that's part of Zoom. 
it's part of Zoom and I'm multitasking tonight. Yeah. So I haven't seen any cats walking. Now we have to see a pet. That's what I was going to say. No, no pets. No <laughs> pets. Uh, so what is zero waste? I defined this in our first talk, but I'll do it again briefly so we're all on the same page. Zero waste is a growing movement to reduce what you consume and throw away. Very simple. There's five principles of zero waste to follow in order. They are refuse, reduce, reuse, recycle, and rot. Refuse the things you don't need. Reduce the things that you do need. Reuse the things you already have or swap them with reusables. Recycle what you can and rot or compost the rest. They're all integrated. Um, if you refuse, you are reducing, right? If you reuse, you're reducing. You see what I mean? So through this talk, I will focus on reuse, but I'll also touch on the other steps in zero waste along the way. I've broken up the principle of reuse into three categories. Uh, the reusables, the make it do's, make it do, make it do's, and the use it up, use it ups. Maybe I'll change that later, but I think it, I think it works. With each of these areas, the goal is the same, reducing the dependence of single use products to use fewer resources so you can buy and waste less stuff softening your shopping and waste footprints. Switch on your creative, resourceful, and frugal mindsets and think about how past generations would have solved a problem or met a need. Look around your home. Most likely you have something that can be reused for multiple purposes. A motto I like to recite to help is use it up, wear it out, make it do, or do without. Very old school way of thinking. And in our convenience culture, we've just kind of lost track of that. So let's begin with the reusables. In my last talk I gave, uh, that I gave about creating a zero waste lifestyle, I spoke about nine essential items or reusables that you could start incorporating into your lifestyle to get started on your zero waste journey. Swapping disposable products for non-disposable ones like using a canvas tote instead of plastic bags when you go shopping at any store, not just the grocery store. Using a stainless steel container instead of a to-go to container or a doggy bag or a Ziploc bag. Cotton produce bags instead of the plastic ones at the grocery store for your produce and any bulk items that you like. Um, these are also useful for bread and pastries. A mason jar with a lid for use of bulk items, not just in the bulk section, but in the deli section and the deli counter for olives, cheese, sandwich meat, deli food, like egg salad, potato salad, that sort of thing. Coffee, uh, to, to go cutlery set. Um, you've seen those bam, bamboo cutlery sets, or you can make one at your home uh, with what you have on hand, of course, which I definitely encourage for ice cream or food on the go. Um, bamboo toothbrush, because they're compostable and the plastic ones never biodegrade. Uh, stainless steel straws, because no one really needs a straw unless you need a straw for, for health reasons and because they're killing our sea life and polluting our oceans. Cotton napkins to eliminate the need and waste of paper ones. Uh, beeswax food wrap instead of plastic wrap. And so we can go further. That's what I talked to my last, uh, that's what I was talking about in my last. So to go further, once I used up all my plastic handled scrub and toilet brushes and disposable sponges, I owned, I replaced them with wooden handle brushes with nat natural bristles or compostable sponges. Those you can reuse multiple times and then dispose of them you know, in your backyard compost or at least they're going to biodegrade and they're not plastic. After I use up 
my last roll of paper towels, I started using rags. I haven't used paper towels in years now. And I honestly can tell you, I do not miss them at all. I just throw them in the laundry to be washed when it's laundry day. That's it. I use a cotton string mop that I can throw in the washing machine after cleaning instead of a swisher mop or a microfiber mop that releases microplastics when you wash it or a scrub roller one that only lasts so long. You know, those get really dirty and can hold a lot of bacteria. Um, I switch from commercial cleaning supplies to homemade non-toxic ones uh, that I make myself. Single-use tea bags to reusable tea infuser and bulk tea. Uh, disposable coffee pods to a French press or coffee maker with reusable coffee filters. Um, Teflon to cast iron plastic cutting boards to wood ones, plastic lighter to wooden matches. Those are some of the swaps you can make in the kitchen, but there's also swaps that you can make in the bathroom. Just think about all the plastic containers uh, currently residing in your bathroom. In my experience, eliminating single-use products in the bathroom led to minimizing waste. I've swapped excessively packaged products for simple homemade recipes like toothpaste and mouthwash. I've also substituted disposable products with reusable or renewable ones like silk dental floss, a safety razor, unpacked bars of sh shampoo, conditioner, uh, body soap, uh, and body lotion. Southampton Soap Company sells bath products and they'll reuse the plastic bottles once you use up the product. And they'll add the scent of your choice to whatever you're purchasing. Uh, the Smoothery also sells body scrubs, lotion bars, and lip balms if you're not making them or want to make them yourself. You can find them at the Hampton Bays uh, Farmer's Market this month, every Thursday at, from three to seven. A lot of personal care products come with wood handles, not just plastic ones. Look for silicone instead of plastic bottles, uh, especially the squeeze uh, tube ones, tin travel size alternatives, natural fiber shower curtains, and paper wrapped recycled or bamboo toilet paper instead of the plastic wrap. Remember that making a swap doesn't mean throwing away what you currently own, but rather using it until it has served its purpose and then replacing it with a healthy, uh, more sustainable one. Much like the care you take with what you put in your body, there are healthy options for you, uh, for what you put on your body. Birthdays and other celebrations can be reinvented in sync with your values. Purchase reusable decorations, banners, like felt banners, crowns, and candles, beeswax candles, or just reusing a candle, you know, but candles have, you know, more than what just one use. Typically decorations for the holidays, like Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, Hanukkah, are, are the same every year uh, in most homes. So why not for birthdays too? Give gifts from the heart that are homemade or an experience, uh, an experience instead of more stuff. <clears throat> the second, make it do's. The save creative resourceful mindset works for items that you think you need to buy that you already have that can be repurposed or recycled. If you're using Ziploc bags, clean them out until they quit on you and then purchase the multi-purpose stasher bags. Those are the silicone bags that are super popular right now orange peels or chip tea cups can turn into birdseed feeders. The next time you purchase mayonnaise, purchase it in a glass jar so you can reuse the jar to serve as a drinking glass, a vessel for propagating a plant cutting, a storage jar for coins or buttons or needles, uh, like, you know, sewing needles, uh, a container for leftovers or food to go old newspaper for newspaper sea pods or trash can liners, lemon peels for scrap vinegar cleaning spray, um, rubber bands have a multi multitude of reuses, like they can be actually used as erasers. Use up, and that's a good 
thing to, you know, all produce comes with that rubber band, right? So you're always left with that to reuse. Use up scrap wool or fabric to make your own items for household use like um, dryer balls, pot holders, washcloths. I made some wipes and facial cloths with an old pair of soft pajama bottoms. Right now I'm collecting coffee grounds to make a face and body scrub for a friend's birth, upcoming birthday. And I'm collecting leftover oat pulp. I make our own uh, oat milk every two days to make oat pulp chocolate truffles. So it's instead of, you know, it's a way of, instead of just composting the oat pulp, which is all good and fine, but there's ways to reuse that. If you have a facial lotion that you buy in a small bottle and you simply can't live without it, and I know us women, I don't, I think we're all women here, um, you know, we have those products that we love. See if you can purchase it in a bigger size and reuse a smaller bottle for its convenience. And once you've worn out that smaller bottle, replace it with reuse, a reusable glass one. Uh, most pump heads can be added to any glass bottle you might have, even vanilla extract bottles or maple syrup bottles. Notice what you throw out. And ask yourself how you can reuse it. Like before you throw it out, ask, how can I reuse this? Don't be fooled into thinking you need to buy your way to a more simpler, more sustainable lifestyle. There's so many products out there that we really don't need. And they're the sustainable ones just the same. The practice is to reduce what you need and use. Use up disposables and plastics until they no longer serve their purpose. Think about how they can possibly be reused in a different way. And when they quit on you, try to fix them. If you can use the reusable items for multiple purposes, even better. If, you, if they can't be fixed, dispose of them properly or resell them. Then ask yourself, do I need another one? If the answer is yes, replace them with a more sustainable option, like, like the options I provided in the, sustainable, uh, the reusable section. If you can find an item secondhand, awesome. And most likely you can. A resale shop is the best place to look first. Get familiar with Facebook Marketplace or a local Bonnick yard sale on, on Facebook. Start to take notice of what you throw away and note, of, and note what you throw out most and why, so you can figure out where to target your waste cutting efforts. Keep a little notepad next to your garbage or compost and jot down every time you throw something away that could have been eaten or recycled. And for the last section, the use it ups. And in this section, I've kept the focus uh, mainly on food. How, how can you reuse leftovers or food you've made too much of? Make a new combination. For example, serving eggs with the chili you made for dinner earlier in the week for breakfast or lunch. Use leftover stir fry as a salad topper. Add new spices to change up the flavor. Spread half used dips on sandwiches. Send friends home with leftovers. Take on the Thanksgiving leftover mentality and reinvent recipes to use up the leftover food that you've cooked. Older food, when berries start to wilt in the fridge, freeze them to use later in smoothies. When veggies look wilted, I soak them in cold water to recrisp them. Wilted greens are great for pesto, so are carrot tops, beet greens, and unused herbs. Ferment. If veggies aren't going to be eaten immediately, I chop them up and turn them into fermented foods that could last for months, like sauerkraut, ferment, uh, sauerkraut fermented radishes, uh, beet cravas, uh, pickles, or fermented salsa. Uh, freeze. Your freezer is your friend. Uh, if you have too many vegetables, you can blend them with water or veggie stock and freeze them in ice cube trays and then pop them into a smoothie or soup um, or a stew or if you're making a, a new pot of veggie stock. Extra cooked pasta that you're not in the mood to eat tomorrow, pop it in the freezer. 
baked goods are wonderful in the freezer. If you have leftover bread that you know you're not going to eat through the weekend, throw it in the freezer too. In my experience, if you're just going to throw something in for a couple days, you don't really need to worry about how you freeze it, except for fresh fruits and vegetables, which usually require a quick blanch or puree. Uh, but be well organized in the freezer so you don't forget what's in there. Uh, food scraps, to use up your food scraps, like I was saying before with the oat pulp, um, before they end up in the compost bin. Love broccoli, but not the stalks. Try a broccoli stock soup. Google is full of recipes uh, of things like this. Uh, add them, add your broccoli stalks to a homemade veggie stock. Super simple to make. And you get that one last use of all those veggie ends that you kind of discard uh, and don't cook. Um, Juice pulp, if you're a big juicer, the juice pulp can be made into crackers. Uh, nut pulp, if you make your own nut milks, um, they can be made into crackers too, or the chocolate truffles, like I was saying earlier. They're just, they're oodles of information like this online, and as well as numerous cookbooks at your local library. I know there's at least how to freeze and how to, and freezer friendly recipes, uh, books, uh, cookbooks like that. Some veggies and potatoes can actually be regrown from scraps. I'm sure you've kind of seen this trend uh, definitely during the quarantine. Uh, the bottom of a lettuce head you can actually put in water and the lettuce will regrow. Same with um, green onions. Uh, pineapples into house plants. The pineapple tops can be planted in soil and, and propagated into a house plant. Coffee grounds and eggshells also have a multitude of reuses. Like I was saying, the coffee grounds um, can be used for uh, body scrubs, um, but they also repel garden pests, fertilize plants, attract worms in your garden, boost compost. I mean, re even deodorize your fridge or your hands if you were out in the garden or cooking with peppers or jalapenos. Um, they're very, they're, that abrasiveness actually can clean dishes with pots and pans. Eggshells can brighten your laundry, uh, boost compost and indoor plants also, uh, deter garden pests because you, you can crash up um, uh, the shells and then sprinkle around your plants so little snails won't be attracted to uh, your greens. Um, if you have chickens, definitely can be fed to chickens and uh, some people have even used it as a skin tightening, tightening face mask. I've, I've seen that around before as well. Um, you want to go crazy, purple cabbage, red and yellow onion skins and red beets can be boiled down to create dyes for Easter eggs, uh, muslin cloths, uh, pillowcases that are kind of dingy that you kind of want to re revive. Um, and they, you can even make uh, paints with them. So it's all crazy, but it, it's for real. And you might not try everything and that's okay too. But just knowing that these options are out there, that that's where the re uh, creative and resourceful mindset plays in. And Google helps with that. Um, another way to use up unused food is um, drying it to preserve it. Tomatoes, apples, bananas, mango slices, all yummy ways to eat um, kind of aging or a smush, starting to mush uh, fruits. Um, if you have an abundance of tomatoes from your garden or they're discounted at your farmer's market or the farm stand, try canning. Uh, tomato sauce or jams for use later because they preserve in the fridge for months on end. And lastly, uh, salvage food crises. I mean, we're all, you know, trying to do a million things at once. So if you over salted, you can rinse off the veggies or submerge them in water for five minutes or longer. Um, overcooked veggies can be pureed or frozen to make soup if they're just not, you know, good, 
good tasting to eat. Uh, overcooked pasta can be made into a baked pasta dish by adding, you know, some cheese and sauce. Uh, adding maple syrup can remedy, can pretty much remedy any bland food. Um, I'm sure we all have salvaged burnt food by skimming the burnt layer off the top or skimming the portion of the food that comes out easily if it's burnt on the bottom. So just other ways that you're just not saying, oh, it's burnt and then throw it away. You know, ways of salvaging those food crises. So to this day, we still produce trash. So I'm definitely not fitting all my trash into a 16 ounce mason jar, uh, not at all. And you know, it's all relative too to our location on the East End, you know, Wild by Nature Provisions, they're the only uh, grocery stores out here that provide bulk options. I think King Cullen in, King Cullen in um, Bridgehampton has a small uh, bulk uh, section. And I know with COVID too, it's been minimized uh, a lot. Um, so, producing trash is inevitable. And I suspect that we'll, I, I'll always um, produce trash. Not every food, like I said, is available in bulk. Even finding produce without those little stickers on them. So, still a trash. Um, and when it comes to household items, sometimes buying things without a lot of packaging just is impossible. It's just, it's just not. I'm game for making my own cleaning supplies. I actually have fallen in love with it and actually wrote my own ebook on it. But, but if that little light bulb in the refrigerator burns out, I know that it's a trip to the hardware store and probably comes in plastic packaging that can't be recycled. So it's just life circumstances and life circumstances, you know, with two kids and a husband and, you know, trying to stick so much into one day, into one week or one weekend, you know, that gets in the way too. There are times when the demands of work and parenting make it impossible to cut corners, um, to not cut corners. In our convenience culture, that often means I end up buying pre-cooked meals in plastic containers or prepared snacks in single-use wrappers. I do what I can and I give it my best. And I hope you found ideas for reducing waste in your home here tonight. Um, but just remember to be gentle with yourself. Every, anything is going to help. Anything that you do is going to minimize your waste. Composting is going to minimize your trash waste by at least half, I guarantee it. But really, it's just turning on that switch and maybe you get home from the grocery store and you're like, oh, wow, I totally could have done better. And then you know it for the next time, you know. It's not a crash diet, you know, you're not going to just like kill, kill your waste by 90% in one week, so it's not possible. So that's a lot of information to digest and luckily this is being recorded so you can use this video as a resource and come back to it uh, when you need to. Um, let me leave you with a few more things to think about. Through the discovery of the reuse of an object, you can learn to evaluate use and purchase decisions based on the whole life cycle of the object, the whole life cycle of the object. Every object has an impact. All material items have a social, economic, and environmental impact that influences our relationship with stuff. Nothing is free. Reuse creates awareness. Reusing items sparks creativity, awareness, and exploration fostering information, inspiration, and engaged learning. So as you navigate, purchase your items with a bit more thought and a lot more care, not only for your trash can, but for your impact on this beautiful planet. Thank you. Thank you. There are actually some questions, Lauren, if you want to tackle them. Um, you are muted. Oh. So, 
Chat, here we go. Can you say the overall grow, a uh, goal, growing movement? So what is the overall the goal? Growing movement. I mean, when you started out the talk, you said, so it's a growing movement, but then you spoke really quickly and I couldn't write it down, sorry. <laughs> oh, uh, what did I say? I said, it's a growing movement to reduce what you consume and throw away. Thank you. <laughs> Very simple. Uh, let's see what else. What are the silicone bags called again, please? That they are called uh, stasher bags. I don't have props this time around, but I can definitely go through my kitchen and show you. Stasher bags are awesome. Um, this is the larger size. This is what we would put our kids lunch in. Um, I put salsa in here and took it to the beach and just did this poured it in a little cup I brought and had salsa on the beach. <laughs> um, they're awesome. And they come in the smaller sizes too. And they're great too if you're um, storing herbs. You can just wrap them in like a, a you know, a thin um, tea cloth or cheese cloth and, um, and just put them right in here and they'll keep it fresher longer. Um, I keep a bag of fresh, uh, keep a bag for veggie scraps in the freezer and accumulate for stock. Yes. Same with citrus zest. Yes. Awesome. You can actually make, um, powder with the citrus zest, orange and lemon, and add that powder to smoothies just to, to boost like a vitamin C booster. That's awesome. Those are really cool. I haven't made that yet. Um, I use my um, lemon peels uh, in a vinegar uh, all-purpose cleaning spray. I infuse um, the vinegar with the lemon peels, and then I just add water. So it's kind of half and half, one part, one part. And then I use that to pretty much clean everything in my house. That and just soap and water. Um, can we avoid plastic packaging, can we? I don't know, I, I try. <laughs> uh, can we lobby for less pa plastic? I, I was on a call with the waste, the Southampton Waste Committee uh, the, last night or Tuesday night. And uh, you know, recycling is not profitable. They're not making money. The town is paying money now to export all of our trash and our co-mingles um even the private cutters that are picking up your cardboard and paper they were once getting paid for those scraps and they are no longer this it's gonna happen eventually um but if you think about shopping like voting if we all just made those conscious decisions every time we go to purchase something it, the whole concept of supply and demand will will have to change the economy. We'll have to change this convenience culture. It just is going to. Uh, so it, either we're just going to be taxed more to pay for it to over you know to offset these costs that the towns are growing, or uh, or uh, products or companies that produce products are going to have to change change their ways. And honestly, I don't think, you know, reusable uh, water bottle clothing is the answer because that will end up in, our microplastics will end up in the waterways. So there's, I know there's out around off chairs that you can buy that's recycled plastic. I just, I don't think that's the option. I think the option is to minimize and to have better choices. And, a lot, you know, those reusables, package-free, uh, yeah, packagefreeshop.com. That's Lauren Singer, the woman I mentioned before. She has a shop in Williamsburg and Chelsea. She has just like um, increased her product line by a million, uh, oh, especially during COVID. So anything that you truly need that you have to buy, like shampoo bars, I have to buy. You know, that's a continuous purchase. Um, conditioner bars. I make my own lotion. Um, but lotion bars, you know, those are the things that you can buy as a reusable so that you're not contributing that plastic waste. 
Um, guys. Guys. <laughs> uh, a great Facebook book i have a member of is Free Cycle. Oh, East End. Beth Rattray started. Yeah, I'll check that out. I have not heard of that. And the mantra that I was, uh, I kind of keep in my mind growing to the grocery store is use it up, wear it out, make it do or do without. And if you just think like in the frugal mindset, if you, you know, if you don't want to spend the money on things, you know, that's, that's, you know, past generations did. They, they didn't have uh, an unlimited budget to keep buying things over and over again. So they conserved, you know, you're not going to go buy a single use uh, water bottle at the store, but you're going to bring your water with you. It's going to save you $3, but every, you know, every dollar counts in for some people. I mean, we're so super privileged, super privileged and, um, it's coming at a cost and we all live in this beautiful area. I'm, I'm assuming that everyone is living in the Hamptons or close by, no? Where are you from? I didn't hear her. Oh, you're muted. <laughs> uh, Williston Park near Mineola. Okay, I have no idea where that is, no, but you're in New York? Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> it's uh, Garden City. Have you ever heard of Garden City? Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, but just the I'm access. Like, really this way. <laughs> yeah. Just the access to these beaches, you know, these are beautiful bays. You know, we have to cherish them. We have to protect this land that we, that we enjoy vacationing and finding our calm and our peace in. Um, and I, I think... Focusing on waste is, uh, it's how I got started. And then cooking from scratch became like a constant. Um, making my own body products and cleaning supplies that just uh, followed suit. And I just felt so self-sufficient and so empowered to, and I don't need, I need like five ingredients to do it. And, you know, I have some almond oil for, lotion but then i'm gonna make my body scrub with my coffee like i just love that integration uh so it this just works for me and i don't think you have to go to like if you think i'm extreme you don't have to go to mm -hmm. that extreme you can find your way um and you probably will come up with many ways that i haven't even thought of um but it's just the goal is the same, right? The goal is the same. And you have to have uh, your why. Why are you doing it? Why should you care? Why are you going to put the effort in? If no one else is doing it, you know, why do I have to do it? You know, all these, all these thoughts are totally normal thoughts that we have. Anyway, I'm rambling. Uh, yes, Lucy Biggers, yep. My cousin also has a program you might like on Now This. Yes, I watch her. Yes, she's really cool. I like her energy a lot. Uh, please post your mantra. Okay. Uh, Joanna, maybe you can post that underneath the video. Sure. Um, another local soap maker on Etsy called Blue Lacy Bath Co. Cool. I've actually made my own soap. I don't know why I'm so hot. Um, in um, my crock pot. Like I never used this crock pot and now I'm using it to make soap. And it's literally three ingredients. Unless you want to start getting fancy and start infusing the water. And I infused it with cucumber. because so I was like wanting to use my garden in my body products for some reason. That just sounded super cool to me. Um, super easy to make. You just need silicone molds or uh, muffin tin uh, and time, time and the desire to do it. 
Um, thank you for the inspiration to reduce my family's ways. Yes. Looking forward. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Um, mommy turns green on Instagram, Facebook. Uh, I post things that I do constantly. Um, and I would love to hear what you guys do. I'd love, love to share ideas and just create that momentum, you know, to influence everybody around us. And honestly, even bringing my own bamboo cutlery to some of these uh, outdoor parties that have occurred over the summer with friends, even though they're providing the plastic ones, like it, you're saying something, you know, people are watching. People are understanding, and then they're, they're so apologetic, too, like, oh, I'm so sorry, I know I'm serving plastic, you know, and then next time they'll just use what's in their, in their silverware drawer instead, or they'll buy the more compostable wooden ones um, that are easy to dispose of. Um, so even just those little things, uh, people, people notice. <laughs> 